right, guys, we've already gone through the meat and potatoes of the bike on the spotlight. Now it's time to check this out. We're going to go through some of the highlighted points on it. Now, whenever we're talking about a road glide, especially whenever I've got one of the newer ones, I always like to bring up that shark nose style fairing. Okay, in 2014, Harley introduced the Rushmore Project bikes. Okay, and they redesigned the fairings, the stereo systems, and everything at that point, uh, bag enclosures, and all that kind of good stuff. But they also skipped a year of the road glides, okay? They didn't bring it back until 2015. Now, those Harley was smart, and they even let the salespeople out there know that they were gonna be skipping a year, and it made it one of the easiest years to be able to sell a road glide, because all you had to do was come up and tell the customer, hey man, did you hear next year that Harley's gonna skip the road glide? They're gonna redesign the fairing? Oh my God, everybody would be like, oh, I need the one right away, because the road glide riders are always so dedicated to it. Well, Harley did knock it out of the park when they brought it back in 2015 with a three vent system and some scallops on the fairing to be able to improve what was arguably one of the best on the market. You got an open and closing vent here on the front, okay, up at the top underneath the windshield. Uh, over here on the side of the headlight, you can see a little bit of sunlight passing through there. I'm gonna close the vent, it gets real dark. Open the vent, it gets real light. Okay, and then you've got another vent, of course, here on the opposite side of the headlight as well. Now, we're not gonna see any light going through and playing the buttons on that one, but it's definitely something you need to see. And that wind is actually gonna be able to come through and channel the wind away from the driver. Okay, so you can actually use a shorter windshield and get a better ride quality. Now this being a 2017, it was also a first year for a front end, okay? What they did is they actually put a dual cartridge system in the front shocks to be able to make this thing handle like an inverted front fork. So the ride quality of this bike has been dramatically improved over the years, 2017 stepping up as much as it did back in 2015 as well. Now, 2017 was also a huge year for the motor company because they introduced the new Milwaukee 8 motor. Okay, they penned at that for two main reasons. One, it was the eighth generation of V-twin motor from the motor company. Also, because of the four valves per head. So, you had four valves per head, two plugs per head, so Milwaukee eight okay eight valves all the way around and they were really making the best performance of, the, of possible of the motors the twin cam was a great motor but this was really a, a motor that's going to take them to the next level now this one's got the 107 okay 2017 they only had the 107 really available the 114 was only available on a screaming eagle uh back in that year and it's you know great power output two plugs per head making the most of all the fuel out there uh and definitely a good performing bike less vibration because they actually put a counterbalancer on the on the crankshaft on that year so there was a lot of differences on this machine that really made it ride smoother, a lot better torque, a lot better horsepower. <clears throat> Something else that really changed in 2017 about the bike was in the saddlebag. Uh, a lot of people didn't pay a lot of attention to it, but it was something that was only possible because of the Milwaukee 8 motor. It was the mounts, okay, the mounting system on the saddlebag. Uh, back whenever, you know, hell, ever as long as the baggers have been around, they've always had these weird airport style clips in there with like a, a spring clamp to it and then these little clevises that just sort of do a quarter turn. Well, this one here, okay, what they do is they actually ratchet all the way out. So you can actually work them all the way out, screw them down, and then whenever you put them on, you can tighten them on. They lock into place. And then they've got sort of a, a almost like a toilet handle here. And what that'll do is stop them from backing out in case they do it. Now, the reason why I say that this is only possible with the Milwaukee 8 motor on it is just plain and simply because of the lack of vibration. Okay, now on the twin cam motor, it was a rubber mounted system and it vibrated quite a bit. But on the 2017, the Milwaukee 8 had a very, very minimal vibration because of the counterbalancer that was on the crank. So you were able to put a, put a mount on the saddlebag that was going to be a lot more solid, less prone to fall off, and it's not going to shake the bag into pieces because of the vibration. See? All right, guys, we've gone over a couple of the really cool highlighted parts that the motor company put on the bike, but let's check out some of the custom things that are done to it aftermarket, okay? The first thing you're gonna notice is gonna be those ape hangers, okay? That's gonna be about a 14, uh, 14 inch ape if I was to put a guess to it. Uh, the cool thing about apes is not only are they cool looking, but they're also really helpful for long haul comfort. Okay, let's just say for example, okay, I'm a lofty five foot six and a half on a really good day. I'm gonna claim that every bit of it. Don't you say any different. But you can tell, this is gonna be right up level to about my shoulder, okay? And whenever you've got that hand level to your heart, okay, you're gonna get the best blood flow. You see people that are shaking their hands out all the time if their bars are up here or if their bars are down here, okay? That's the thing, whenever your bars are low, it also hampers your blood flow. So whenever your handlebars are just about level to your shoulder, at least towards your heart, you're gonna get the better blood flow, better comfort level, and let's just face it, you look cool as hell. 
And then, of course, one of the first questions everybody's going to ask is, what kind of exhaust does it have on it? Uh, you know, we always spend way too much money to try and get our bikes as loud as humanly possible. It always just winds up costing us money and, you know, noise ordinance tickets or, you know, just pissing somebody off, your neighbors, your homeowners association. Does it stop us? No. And what's the first question we're still going to ask? What kind of pipes does it have on it? And this one here has got a set of Vance and Hines uh, high outputs, okay? They're the big, fat, slip-on pipe. Uh, they've got a good rumble to them. Uh, like I said, this is just a slip-on exhaust. It does not have a full tune stage one or anything to it. Uh, it's not really needed. The 107 puts out great power. Uh, and with the slip-on pipe from Vance and Hines, it's really got a good rumble. So it's definitely going to send you down the road and let everybody know that you're out there rumbling around on one of those big Harleys.